Okay, in this video, we're just going to go through a bunch of proofs here. Um, I'm going to keep emphasizing an order in which you need to kind of think about um, finishing the proofs, um, how we can mark everything and double check ourselves. So try and catch on to that as well. All right, anytime we do proofs, we always want to start with the first given statement. It's a great place to start. So just rewrite it. It's going to be your first statement. So segment EM bisects angle PED, and the reason is always because they gave it to you. It's given. So just rewrite given. Now, after you've written that first statement and the reason, ask yourself this question. What does this allow you to draw in the picture? Because usually it helps you draw something. If we know that segment EM bisects angle PED, well then that allows us to say that these little angles right here are equal because PED, the big angle here, got cut exactly in half into two equal parts. So because we drew something in our picture, that's our next statement. What did we just draw? Describe it. Well, we said the angle PEM, this left angle PEM, is congruent to the other side starting with the corresponding parts, D, E, M, because P and D are corresponding, so D needs to be first in the name. So that says that these two angles are congruent, and the reason we were allowed to draw this and say this is because of the definition of a bisector, and the definition of an angle bisector, to be more specific. So there's two types of bisectors, bisector, and there we go. Um, so be specific, we're talking about an angle bisector because the angle got bisected. Alright, so after you've done that, after you've used up this given statement and what it helped you draw, go on to the next given statement. So just rewrite the given statement there. Segment EM is perpendicular to segment PD. And that's given, again. Don't miss those. And ask yourself the same question. Just redo everything you just did, that same order. Ask yourself, what does this statement allow you to draw in the picture, if anything? Segment EM is perpendicular to PD. Well, then that must mean that these are 90 degree angles. Because um, perpendicular lines create two pairs of adjacent 90 degree angles. So say what we drew. That's our next statement. Um, describe the angle. Angle PME would be a, a way to name this angle. And it's congruent to its corresponding named angle on the other side. So if we start with P again, we got to start with D. And say angle DME. And that's describing this angle here on the right. And the reason that these two are equal is because, well, perpendicular lines create. Um, congruent 90 degree adjacent angles, really. So they create 90 degree angles. 90 degree angles are congruent, right? They're the same measurement. All right, so we got two things, two parts of these triangles that we're looking at that we've already proven are congruent. So let's start a plan. And this plan will help us determine what is missing. Um, it's always nice to start the plan at the beginning, but we'll do that on the next one. So we know an angle, that we've proven that part of a triangle, and we've proven another angle. Thinking about those three proofs, side, 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 angle, side, and angle, side, angle, which one has two A's in it? Well, angle, side, angle. So this is the one we're missing. We haven't talked about a side yet. So look at the picture. What's the side that's in between the two angles? That's what it has to be. Well, it's this right here. So give it a congruent hash mark and talk about what you just drew. We said segment EM is congruent well to itself. It's part of both of these triangles, right? So when we're talking about both of the triangles, we can talk about this segment twice. Um, and it's always nice to name itself the second time a reflection of itself. Because that will help you remember the reason. And the reason is this thing called the reflexive property. And it really doesn't have to do with the reflection, but it's close enough, and it helps us remember it. 
So if you ever name a segment congruent to itself, it's always going to be reflexive property for a reason. And we'll do a, a few more where we do that. So we got our three letters. We got our proof. So well, what were we asked to prove? That's always our last statement. And we just rewrite it. We're asked to prove that the two triangles are congruent. And we did that. And our proof method, or reason, was angle side angle. So we prove these two triangles are congruent by saying that an angle and a side and an angle that corresponded are congruent. All right, let's do another one here. All right, here is another proof. Uh, we're given a statement, and we're asked to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. We're proving triangles are congruent. Start with the given. Always start with the first given. Why is the midpoint of segment LY? Reasons always given. Ask yourself the question, what does this given statement allow you to draw? Why is the midpoint, oops, we need to change this. Make that LH, that would make more sense. LH. So there we go, why is in the middle of LH? Well, that tells us that this segment, HY, must be the same distance as, or same length as YL. If this has to be right in the middle, then these are the same lengths cut in half, basically. So what did we draw? That's our next statement. What did you draw? We drew HY, segment HY, is congruent to segment LY. And the reason for that is called the definition of a midpoint. We can say that those two segments are equal midpoint here. Those two segments are equal because it, Y was in the middle. It has to be if these two segments are equal. So we got everything we could get out of that given statement. Let's move on to the next given statement. WH, segment WH is parallel to segment LF. So that's given. So look in the picture. Ask yourself, what does that allow you to draw? What marks can we draw based on that statement? Um, if LWH sorry, is parallel, here's our symbol for parallel, to LF, well, then we know something about some interior angles here. If you think about parallel lines uh, being crossed or intersected by a transversal here, if we extend this, we can... Imagine it being that transversal cutting two lines, two parallel lines. And that allows us to talk about interior angles, alternate interior angles to be more specific. So we got this angle right here, angle H right there, and its alternate interior angle would be right here if this were the transversal. It's kind of tricky to see there. Um, so what did we draw? We drew two angles that are congruent. Let's talk about it. Angle H is pretty descriptive of that angle. That's enough. Angle H is congruent to angle L down there. And the reason for that, remember, was that if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Let's say alternate interior angles are congruent you know if lines are parallel this is enough if we want to be super specific we stay that say that whole statement there we don't have enough room though so this is good enough get the gist um, so we used up our second given statement there what have we proven so far we've proven an angle this is our plan remember Say so we're going to start with it. I forgot. Angle and a side. So what's missing here? I think we're missing an angle. Well, let's check on our drawing here. We have angle, side. So this angle must be what we're missing. What type of angles are these? If you remember that vertical angles form a V that reflects itself. 
You never spot vertical angles. You can usually use them in your proof. So we're missing those angles. So let's talk about what we just drew. Angle H, angle there. H, Y, W is congruent to. How do we name the corresponding angle here? What's corresponding with H? L. So we got to start our angle name with L. Angle Y, F. So those two angles are congruent because of the definition of vertical angles. That's the definition of vertical angles says that they're congruent. All right, so we got our proof. We got three letters. That's what we wanted. So our last proof statement, it asks you to prove. That's what you write last. Rewrite it. Triangle WHY is congruent to triangle FLY. And the reason we proved was because angle, side, angle are corresponding congruent parts. And let's see if we can do one more here. I'm going to have to go through this one slightly fast. Start with the givens. So segment AB is congruent to segment DC. What does that allow us to draw? Reasons given. What does that allow us to draw? Um, AB, the segment, is congruent with segment DC. We'll talk about what we just drew. That's our next statement. Oh, we already did. So we can't say anymore. We've got to move on to the next given. Sometimes that happens. That's all we can do. It says segment AB is parallel to segment DC. Um, AB is parallel to DC. Well, if we're talking about parallel lines, look for a transversal and know you're going to talk about some alternate interior angles or corresponding angles, something about parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Uh, this was our other given statement. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. So we're looking for angles, probably. Look at these parallel lines. Do we extend them? And extend this to talk about our transversal? Let's find those alternate interior angles. We know it's got to be something next to the side that we already proved was congruent. So it's probably going to be this one. And what's alternate interior from there? It's right there. So what did we just draw? That's our next statement. We said that angle BAC, right over here, was congruent to angle DCA. And that was because, again, alternate interior angles are congruent if lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal. Um, so what do we got in our plan here? Here's our plan. We got a side and we got an angle. Well, let's see. We could go angle side angle, or we could go side angle side. Well, let's see. Let's look at our drawing. What needs to come next? Uh, side. Let's go the other way. Angle side angle would be up here, and that might be possible if we knew something else about this picture, but we don't. We can never assume anything. So we got to say something that we know here. Well, let's go the other way. Side angle what about this side? It seems to be congruent with itself. So that's pretty easy to prove. So our plan is side angle side. Let's say what we just drew there about that side. We said that segment AC was congruent with itself. So talk about its reflection, CA. Because that helps you remember that it's the reflexive property. If you say a segment is congruent to itself, the reason is always reflexive. So we got our proof statement. We got enough things, enough corresponding parts that are congruent that we can say we proved that the triangles are congruent. So last statement's the proof statement. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA and the reason we said was side angle side. Alright, so there's a bunch of examples there um, doing some proofs on proving two triangles are congruent. Our next video is going to talk about how we can use that to talk about any corresponding side and how it's congruent. All right.